What's mm-hmm. up? It's way up for Angela. Yeah, you heard that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jasmine from the Jasmine brand is here. And Juice Adora is here. What's up, y'all? Hey. We were just so having Thank you. a great conversation about where you're from. Chicago. You already know. Chi-town. Chicago. I'm from Chicago, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Also, here, listen, oh, okay. I don't know if that's a real curse because y'all said it on The Real Housewives quite a bit. <laughs> Ooh, they be bleeping us. The whole conversation be bleeped out sometimes. I'm like, what was the argument even about? I don't even know. I'm glad that you just said that because one of the things I wanted to talk to you about yes. before we get back to uh, your love for Chicago, um, <laughs> because I was also saying that my last day on The Breakfast Club, I left here and went straight to Chicago and ended up partying like all night. I follow this yes. page, Black People Eat, and he set me to go eat at this restaurant that turned out to be like a club. <laughs> <laughs> at Chicago, you gonna par- we gonna party. We gonna footwork, mm-hmm. we gonna step, we not gonna sit, you know what I mean? Do you know how to step, Drew? Lo- of course. Of course you Don't do. play okay. with how it. How dare step me? Step up. Yes, <laughs> and like, it is like a part of our culture. If you come from Chicago, you don't know how to step or footwork, it's like, in juke, yeah, oh, I don't yes. know. I don't know Jukin. what that is. Juke. <laughs> I actually had a song when I was signed to Slip and Slide called Juke It, mm. and it's basically where you just grind on a guy. And we've been doing this since oh. we were in high school. Like <laughs> I, it, they just I gave it a name. What you do? Yeah, <laughs> I had family in Chicago. I spent okay. some summers in Chicago. I learned how to double dutch in Chicago. Yes. Oh. Also learned how to fight. Yeah. In Chicago. <laughs> I did. I did. First fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you got to follow Chicago Media Takeout, they had on Juneteenth, out. I think it was Juneteenth, uh-huh. people was stepping in the middle of the street for I Juneteenth. We celebrate. I love we it. We like to have fun as much, and I talk about all the time the gun violence is running rapid, mm-hmm. you know, but it is a city where we celebrate. Like, we're very cultured. We come from family. A lot of our families came from the South. Our parents, right. our grandparents migrated. So we ta- we were raised, you know what I mean, as family and love. So we're hospitable, but then don't cross us. Right. Because then you wake up the bear. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that's know. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. Chicago Bear, <laughs> shout out. But it is a thing because we love so hard. And it's a beautiful city, and I really hope that um I can keep bringing awareness to, you know, the city and the beauty of it. But the violence that is a problem and running rampant. So. And I think part of that is also Chicago is super segregated. Yeah. And that's by design, mm-hmm. right? And Talk so when it. you go to certain places, you're like, how is it so rich over here? But then I come here and it's a completely different type of vibe. That's a and whole conversation. With opportunity, with housing, mm-hmm. with resources, edu- with the right education, mm-hmm. with all of those things, it would be less violence. Absolutely. I work on the task force for Robin Kelly, Mm -hmm. who's our congresswoman, and I've learned so much that a lot of the schools were closed down um, and a lot of the after school programs. So what the research has shown are the kids are bored. A lot of those kids with guns, they are 10, 11 years old. They don't even understand life and death. But when you ask them, because I did work with Father Flager of Mm St. Sabina, and he did the Peace Jam. They say all they want to do is play basketball. Right. So he started the Peace Jam, and the Fruit of Islam does security, and it's one day where all the gangs come together and agree to have a day of peace, and they play ball. That's dope. That, I remember doing it's something. That simple. D- Derek Rose has a park out there, yep. right? Yes. With a basketball court and everything yes. over there. So, And I know that Dwayne Wade tried to open up a sports complex. It was a lot of politics that played, and he wasn't able to do that. But that's a testament of some of the politics, you know, that mm-hmm. happened. So there's been a lot of great work, but there's so much more to do. Well, let's talk about you and the great work that you've been doing. Let's talk about it. Real Houses of Atlanta. (laughs) Now, since you brought up the whole bitch, and can I say that? So Marlo (laughs) and you kind of got into it a little bit on the show. Kind of. Yeah. Did we get into it or did she come for me? And she felt like you should have been okay with her uh, coming at you like that because that's just how we talk. You Mm. know how you'd be like, bitch, this, and... Well, you know, we know different bitches. Like, hey, bitch. (laughs) Well, that's you, bitch. You know, that's a good bitch. bitch. That's, that's a good bitch, bitch. But the way I received it, it felt very different to me. Mm-hmm. You know, when you in somebody's face and you want to do this, come on now, somebody do that. What does that mean? Right. Like, we we know in our culture, like, you don't do that on someone. And I gave her grace, of, of course, because if you see what I was saying, I was like, feel my heart. I did not know this happened. So, mind you, I've been around her for years now, and I never knew this story. None of the ladies knew this story. So, I was confused trying to figure it out. Her nephew was killed, exactly. right? Exactly. Her mm-hmm. nephew used to wear at Candy's restaurant but did not get killed at because I think that's where the confusion came in he used to work Mm -hmm. at Candy's restaurant old lady gang but that's not where he got killed right 
Right. So I was trying to navigate and understand it. And when I saw that it was hurting and, and, and obviously traumatizing and triggering for her, I was trying to, you know, calm her down and let her know, I feel your heart. I feel you. But I guess she was just very triggered at that moment. I can give grace in that if you can come back around and own it and apologize, because I absolutely had nothing to do with that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and that was just my issue with it is like now you see us. Episode six. We're still around each other. Where's the apology? Right. Where's the ownership that, OK, I may have acted out of character. That wasn't right. Um, and that's really all I was looking for was if we are friends, you know, why do you not care that you kind of deflected and displaced that anger on me? That yeah. wasn't fair to me. And mm -hmm. you watch the episodes, right? So you get yes. to see what Did gets so, edited. Uh -huh. So you saw when yeah. you called her from your video shoot. And when you, she's in the car, when yeah. Marlo's in the car, okay. Yeah, Mar Marlo's on her way to her blind date. Mm -hmm. She calls me. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys spoke, mm -hmm. and she had some things to say after you guys hung up. She hung up on me. Mm -hmm. She did hang up on you. <laughs> yeah, Thank did. you. She did hang she up, up on me. me. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See ya. <laughs> And it was like, again, like, girl, like, can we have an adult conversation? I mean, we're women. Let's use our vocabulary, you know. Is it something that we missed in that scene that maybe it was editing? It editing. wasn't. Yeah. It okay. wasn't. I mean, we were having what I thought was a grown woman conversation. Um, sometimes I can't always understand what Marlo was saying. Um, mumbles. But I was there and present trying <laughs> to get through a conversation. And when she hung up... To hear her say all those things, I'm like, how do we go from there to there? Like, right. you called me, and with an intention, I thought, to have some resolution. And then, I mean, those things she said, I felt were below the belt. You know, okay. body shaming, yeah. really? Yeah, that was really nasty. I ain't gonna I lie. Mean, I mean, it, it was like... And by the way, you look great. I was gonna put good. that out there. Yeah. Yes. And as women, I've had three kids, so, like, that's not something yes. I joke about because there's a lot of women out there that struggle with weight, yeah. that struggle with body, you know, issues. So, to speak to that, I think, was very distasteful, but it's... It's a show of her character mm -hmm. again. I want to ask you about Marlo feeling a way about you not saying the word shooting when you were talking about Candy's restaurant. And also, there were some people that felt like you were acting oh. and, you know, like you were, you, you know, you didn't want to say the word when you were talking, you know, like you, it was hard for you to get it out with some people say, like you didn't mm. want to mention it on the show. Can you mm. clarify what that was about or? Well, first of all, people, that narrative that I'm, yes, I'm an actress, okay? <laughs> I get paid to do it. But it's a bad narrative that is just, they're running with it. Because it's like, okay, I might be dramatic. I'm from Chicago. I talk with my hands. Mm -hmm. But I am really, what you see is what you get. Mm -hmm. I Like, I am the same person. So I don't really like that narrative because I do come and being my authentic, genuine self. Right. Um, so I throw that away. But in that moment, I was at Candy's restaurant with my mom. We were celebrating her 76th birthday. It was like 30 family members from Chicago. We were all at Blaze two days before that story broke. Okay. So I reached out to Candy in real life, and we talked. So when I brought it up, I was checking it on my friend. I'm going to always be respectful, and I also feel like we have a big platform. Let's not act like there's not cameras here. Mm -hmm. right. I feel like when we are speaking to these type of issues, we need to be sensitive right. to the people that are watching. After that episode aired, I got so many calls from the mayor of Chicago, aldermen, um, mothers that have lost their children to gun violence, yeah. and they were very triggered. So I felt that we have a responsibility to be sensitive to those watching. And because I'm from Chicago, what I was saying in that moment was, there is a lot of gun violence. Everyone knows what we deal with in mm -hmm, Chicago. Right. Please let's not throw this word around. Um, and let's just be sensitive. So I do choose my words because I'm aware that people can be triggered watching it. And okay. it's a very sensitive subject. Right. It is. And I feel like if we're going to have the conversation, let's elevate it. And then let's talk about it and what we can do to be positive game changers with gun violence. Okay. And that was that's genuine from my heart. And I just feel like we have to be responsible on this platform. Yeah. No, you absolutely do. And Drew, I feel like this season... You have a lot that you have to deal with. Girl. And so new music, first of all, yes. let's put that out because you were doing a video. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a song that Ralph, did he write this song? He produced it. He, he co-produced it. Okay, he mm -hmm. co-produced it. Yeah. And so, but y'all were going through, I, I guess in the studio, that's when things were really working between you guys as you're trying, you were trying to work through your marriage. Yes. But then unfortunately, we found out that things did end up falling apart and you both mm. actually filed for divorce. Right? Mm. Like you filed first and then he filed right after. Y'all race into, race into the courthouse. Why? Now, why does that happen? Just be just for people who don't know. Yeah. Like, why does it matter who files for divorce? Well... I actually, we were in marriage counseling, so I'll start there. We were in marriage counseling. He stopped mm -hmm. coming to marriage counseling. 
and I stayed in marriage counseling. Um, and during that time, we focused on music because that was like what brought us together. And that was our happy place. So that was kind of a good distraction for us. But we weren't dealing with the issues in the marriage. So ultimately, what you see is, you know, we're enjoying each other. We enjoy music. We're both passionate. But those issues were still coming up, you mm -hmm. know, some on camera, some off camera. Um, and really, we just reached a breaking point of things that continuously happened in the marriage that I no longer could deal with. Right. So he caught wind that I was filing, mm. and I filed. And a testament to who he is, he tried to beat me. <laughs> so it was like, no. This, does it so matter? What's the point, yeah, yeah, what's what the point of that? The... Like, what's the point I... of who files... For, like, why would he try to beat you to do that? What does that even... Is it just for the public, like... Yeah. Oh, okay. I felt like okay. it was um, just for public reputation, you know, to save face, to maybe deflect and flip it in a way to be the victim. I really can't speak for him, but that was how it felt to me. And Drew, I want to make sure that we're sensitive to you, because this is real-life issues. You guys yeah. have children together. Yeah. This is not, like... A TV acting situation. Yeah. I know this isn't easy for you. You guys yeah. had eight years of marriage. You put up with a lot. <laughs> I, honestly, even yeah. in previous seasons, I definitely feel for you because it felt like you wanted your marriage to work. You just yeah. wanted some honesty. And there were certain things that I think anybody watching is like, he bugging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, he bugging. Yeah, like yeah. This, yeah. Is, this is wild. This is crazy. Mm -hmm. And so I saw the reason that you filed was these infidelities you know, that were happening and people even sending screenshots of conversations and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. And how did he react to that? Because it feels like he also doesn't really take much accountability. That part, yeah. That was it. It was, you know, as a woman, as a wife, I just did what I felt um, that was my duty, which was to submit to my husband. And the better for worse was really sincere in my heart. My parents have been married for 60 years, so... I only see, you know, my example was seeing two people who loved each other constantly working to make their marriage right. So, yeah, we had issues, but I always looked to him to own it, mm -hmm. um, emotionally help me heal, you know, um, apologize, just make things right. And I never received that. So uh, the trust diminished. Um, I, I now can say I think I lost a lot of confidence. Right. Even still. Um so, yeah, ultimately it was like enough is enough. Like now it's the public humiliation of it. Um, so it's not even that we're dealing with this behind closed doors. And all of that just kind of had me to reach a breaking point. You think this show made it worse, like the attention that he was getting from hmm. that? And, and people also being able to see everything play out. I remember, and I had, when this happened, I was on the Breakfast Club at the time, but mm. he did this whole thing where he like went out of town and didn't tell you where mm. he was going. I made that a topic. I was like, you can't go out of town and just not say where you are and think that that's okay and just be like, I need to get away. Yeah. Like, getting away is like, let me go for a walk around the block for, <laughs> right. you know, 30 minutes. Or this is where I'm going. This is where I'm staying. Here's my address. Let me, fa like, that's, Stepping yes. away and having a moment to yourself. You know? Yeah. I mean, that was all. Like, I understand people needing a break, a time out. But let me know. We have three kids. Um, this was right after my Achilles surgery. So I essentially had, like, one good leg. You know, I was in a cast and mm -hmm. the other one. So it was like, you leave. That was crazy. And, you know, and I didn't know where he was and he wasn't answering. So that, that was, you know, an episode that I thought we moved past. But there was more of that, you know. Right. So it just, it wasn't getting better. It wasn't getting better. Do you feel like the women are supportive during this time for you? So far they have been. That's great. I can great. say for sure, like I do appreciate them reaching out. Um, Kenya's been amazing. Candy just really sharing even advice because, you know, Kenya's been going through similar situations. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I saw when Sheree was up here, she was just saying that she doesn't like the pettiness and she mm -hmm. wants to make sure that you guys can support each other. And that she, But she says she feels like she supports everyone, but she doesn't get that in return. <laughs> I mean, I think we all have our moments, you know, uh, but I do think when there's real life happening, that sisterhood does come to the forefront. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And so let's discuss the music. Let's get back to that. So you did. <laughs> yes. And the video. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you mm -hmm. actually got some roller skating lessons. Oh, my God. So <laughs> I have a group of friends, uh, Yandy, um, Ami, McClure. The, it's just a bunch of us. And we were like, 
ooh, let's learn how to roller skate. Don't none of us know how to roller skate. Let's have a roller skating party. So I reached out to Push, who's Usher's <laughs> choreographer, who did the amazing Vegas show. I was like, well, we're gonna do this. We gotta go to the best. I love that you can <laughs> reach out to these people. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, just DM. She's yeah. so just famous. Did. She's so nah. famous. But you've been in this business for a minute. Yeah. So. I have. Yeah. And I DM'd him and he wrote back. I was like, I love you. And <laughs> we took lessons and it was great. But I probably needed more lessons. <laughs> you, you might, you might I have. Was, yeah. You might I have. thought I was ready and I was like, let's do it. <laughs> I got there, I was like, okay, just edit this real cute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun and it was the time for me to bring all the ladies together well almost all the ladies but mm-hmm. all the ladies that you know would support me and it was good it was fun uh, the video actually is coming out and gonna release after the episode so oh, nice. y'all get to see the final full product I want to ask you about your relationship with your sister cause she showed mm-hmm. up at the video shoot oh uh, and that was really nice cause we didn't know how that was gonna yeah. go yeah me neither well, <laughs> I didn't realize and maybe I missed it before mm-hmm. I didn't realize it was such a a tense relationship recently. Yeah. How yeah. is it? How is it now? And, um, what, and was she hesitant about showing that on the show? You know, um, she went through a mental health uh, mishap. Now mm-hmm. I know the right terminology. Um, being sensitive, but yes, she went through that during COVID. Yeah. So she had never been to Atlanta to see me and my kids, and she was actually my manager since right. I was eight years old. So for that's her, a long time. Yeah, like our whole life has been her being my manager. We never really had like that sister relationship. Um, but her and Ralph didn't always get along. It was mm. very I'm sure relationship. <laughs> and I felt in the middle at times. Yeah, he was but... like, I'm not coming out the room <laughs> while she's he there. Said he was going to leave. He said again. he was going to leave. I was like, I he said. about to go somewhere else. I was and... like, he's trying to find an yeah. excuse. Yeah, okay. That's and what I thought too. I was like on my knees so much because I was like, I know that she was coming out here to escape kind of her environment and I really wanted it to be a healing trip for her so I was just trying to make sure everyone was happy but her coming to the video was like really really like important for me very special because she was my manager so for her to see even in her absence I'm still pushing through you know managing myself basically at this point <laughs> and um yeah it was very touching they all hugged and I was just like thank you God <laughs> like the prayers worked yeah I hate that you have to go through not just this div- and I see like with the, the way that I saw on TMZ they're like this is all gonna play out on the show but I also saw they said that he's not gonna be filming at all hmm I don't know, TMZ said that, and this was a couple of months ago. I love that you be knowing, because I I think he did film. I feel like he likes TV. <laughs> I do. You know, and I'm confessional TV, like, you know, like, he looks, he looks yeah, like he's an what active participant. What he do par- with Jasmine's show? <laughs> he's an active participant. I, I'm not trying to be sure. That is funny. But it looks like it looks That's like the muscles. Right. Yeah, it looks like he's happy to be there. He don't look like, you know, some like of Like he wanted to be in the video yeah, with his shirt off. Yeah, he, he like. <laughs> She know her, she know her mm-hmm. her estranged man, but yeah, it looked like he was he liked to film. Yeah, he did enjoy it. He did. I mean, he showed up even times where I was like, "Oh, you're gonna film me today, okay?" Like, but every time he was ready and willing. So, so he is gonna be uh, talking his side during this whole divorce because yeah. it is gonna be shown, and that on bothers the me because even when the headline came out that he filed first. We found out that was actually him, you know, and his attorney running to the press. And I was like, wait a minute. Like, I filed with our initials. You know, I did not name our children in my petition. I wanted to keep it pretty, you know, quiet. And they filed with our full names. You Mm -hmm. know, it was just all the details. So it came out in the press. And that was, like, devastating for me because I wanted to protect our kids through this process as much as possible. So I get a sense that, you know, there's going to be some drama. Yeah. And I just don't want that you know for our children but I don't know what to expect honestly were you guys having issues before you joined the cast Mm, absolutely yeah okay so that's why I can't always say the I can't blame the show Mm -hmm. um because I feel like the cameras kind of held us accountable like once you start saying certain things to the world you know you have to deal with it now you can't just stay in that place but there were issues yeah from the beginning I can honestly say and you guys met while you were filming um, as T-Boz? Is that yeah, how for TLC? I did. I met him while I was on my press tour. And my sister Allison, actually, she was the one that was like, oh, all these people dressed up. And they were like at a gala. She's like, you need to talk to my sister. This is the kind of man you need. Oh, oh, and no. it was because of her. She's type A. And she was the one that actually was like, this is who you need to be how with. How ironic. So, right. It was crazy <laughs> that they then, you know, and I was they like, do you later. know that my sister's the one responsible for us <laughs> even being together? And you're banning her from the house. Like, at the end of the day, there were just a lot of things because that's my sister. Mm-hmm. And I would never ban a family member. I think as family members, you may not get along with everybody. You got that uncle or that cousin but you don't turn your back on 
own family. Right. So, you know, that was another hurtful part. But, um, yeah, like I'm just pushing through literally one day at a time. I also saw in the filing, it was like all the money that he spent on them side chicks, Ooh. he's got to be accountable for that. Ooh. She We're said, oop, like she, like it wasn't in, in what she filed. <laughs> ooh. I stand uh, by what I filed. Okay, here it says, Respondent has allowed his multiple paramours to have direct contact with the petitioner such that they could flaunt the fact that Respondent is engaging in sexual relationships with each of them. One such paramour even had the unmitigated gall and audacity to screenshot and send her sexting messages. And then, it, um, and then with the gifts, and it says, and taking trips and all of those things for multiple women, that's his marital debt. Right. So that's all in the paperwork and every. All right, so where are you now with this whole uh, divorce? Is it like you guys are both agreeing to make this happen and now it's just a mediation? Because sometimes paying divorce lawyers mm -hmm. end up costing you more than, mm -hmm. you know, because this is something that could drag out. Listen, the legal bills are. Yeah, that's a real thing. Mm -hmm. Have you tried to do mediation and just sit down and say, how can we yes. resolve this? Because yeah, I've heard from multiple people who have gotten divorced. Mm -hmm that they wish they would have mediated because they ended up it paying money. Yeah, so much money in that yeah. way. Yeah, we, we've tried mediation, um, and we're going to try again, mm -hmm. so that's where we are now. Okay. We're trying mediation. Now, how many people, now that they know that you filed for divorce, are... In your DMs. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because a lot of my DMs were <laughs> hidden, in that like hidden space. Oh, like the oh, other tab. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I ventured off into there and I was like, Oh, <laughs> that's a good it's one. like a little party over here. <laughs> um but you know, I don't even have like yeah. the wherewithal. Yeah. I mean, I have been able to surround myself with good people and friends and you know, friendships. Mm -hmm. I would say good friendships, people that are really just supportive and you know, positive reinforcement that I need right now. So I'm grateful for that. And let's not forget the work that you've done even before this show because I don't want people to think that Drew Sidora is a just came on Real Housewives it was just a housewife right I mean <laughs> period like as far as acting you know singing dancing yeah. all of those things it's important for people to know that you already had the whole entire uh, you know background and what it is that you do the whole resume is thank you and that's why you're on the show thank so, you so you do thank have you. this new video like you said coming out what else are you working on I actually uh, did five films this year, mm. so Sheesh. it got one of them. Good. Is one of or one of them Todd's or is that still in yes. works? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Todd and Candy's movie, The Past. Mm -hmm. I'm the lead in that, so you actually see some of that this okay. season. That's so, dope. See, I love that. It was great to see. You know, for Candy and I to come together and work together. I think that's so important that we are able to take those opportunities, and you don't really see that. So that was it's very juicy, very spicy. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. I, I saw. yeah. <laughs> or I heard him them describing yes. the scene. Oh, like, honey. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was challenging. I mean, but it was very professional. Like Todd did his thing it was it was Todd is good people tier. I feel like yeah mm -hmm. yeah very creative I was like what were you thinking about when you made this movie like <laughs> this is very juicy sir but um that and I did the Sheila McGlown story mm -hmm. for BET which is based on a true story about uh the woman Sheila McGlown she was diagnosed with breast cancer and was given three years to live mm -hmm. and 12 years later she's still struggling with the disease but she was the first she African American to uh, participate in a clinical trial mm -hmm. wow so it's really it's inspiring still, I'm still alive I'm still, girl still <laughs> pushing the <laughs> it, it was very much a tearjerker. So um, I did that. I did a Reginae Carter's Boxed In 2. Yay. And it was just like the blessings were flowing. So that even during this time, you know, as challenging and painful as it is, it was like God was giving me those sprinkles, like keep going, you know, keep going. So, still lit, baby. Mm -hmm. yeah. Still working, yeah. still getting a check. Because <laughs> I need them all for my lawyer bill. Mm -hmm. So it's, still <laughs> been, check. it's been a blessing. Yep. So, And then the music, yeah, it's just like things are flowing in this season. Because I've been doing music, people mm -hmm. don't realize, since like my whole life. Right. Um, um, on the game and step up like I was always trying to implement my love for music and my um, acting so the uh, single is actually dropping um, on finale night Oh, no. yeah. see, I like that. I like that they're showcasing all of these things. Because clearly you yeah. have some real life things happening with your yeah. family. Mm -hmm. You know, I know with your father also and um, your mom, your sister and going through this. But, you know, on the flip side of that, there's some positives as well. Isn't it well. crazy how things happen? I'm like, why couldn't all this just happen when I was happy? You know what I mean? Because like, it, it don't work like it's that. It's like, I'm struggling <laughs> to get to the studio. I'm struggling to get on something. I'm like, but I'm here. You know, right. just 
have grace with myself. But yeah, the album would j- drop, and that's what's really been my therapy. Like going to the studio, everything is what I was feeling at that time. So mm-hmm. great content for music. Ooh. And and I will say, if yeah. you are making music that we can relate to, because we're watching your journey, that mm-hmm. always helps. Yeah, because we can listen to music and be like, oh, we know what she was going mm-hmm. through. Oh, we know, because a lot of us have been there. Yeah. You yeah, know, so yeah. I, I feel like just the way that you've been handling things and handling yourself and for us to be able to come on this journey with you, if that's all in the music, that's going to be something that we're going to be like, oh, Thank okay. you. And it is. The song is called Throw Us Away. And Oof. we were listening to it in the car and I get emotional every time I hear it because it really is. It was like I was questioning at that time, like, why would you throw nine years away why would you throw your family away why would you throw away our opportunity um that we really like dreamed about so the song is really reflective and so i'm excited you know about being able to share that yeah because even the video director is like you make it past eight years you'll be okay yeah. Isn't that crazy? he said yeah. that when i watched it back, i was like whoa <laughs> like yeah he said that so yeah this has just been the energy of this season and i'm just taking it one day at a time y'all all right. Well, thank you so much, Drew Sidora, for joining us. And by the way, yeah. I still have my She by Sheree. She did not take my stuff back. What? So. <laughs> what? She got a bag, got a sweatshirt. sweatshirt. No, you got the bag. Yeah. You got the bag. I have your bag. You got my bag. <laughs> oh, love. All right, then. All right, She by Sheree, my bag, girl. I'm going to have to get me one now. It's crazy. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Drew, for joining us. Thank y'all for having it. me. I appreciate y'all. Way up with thank Angela you. Yee.